What's up guys, hope you're having a good day. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the fight between Raquel Pennington and Ketlin Vieira from a betting perspective. It's a really, really interesting fight from a betting point of view because both of these fighters are in that even money odds range. Having said that, they also both have some pretty major weaknesses that makes it very difficult to feel confident on either of them. We're going to be discussing those weaknesses in depth during this video. And if you like these breakdowns, don't forget to check out all my breakdown videos for the other fights on the UFC card this weekend. If it's a main card fight, you can find a breakdown for it on my YouTube channel. Check out the links in the description below. And if it's a prelim fight breakdown you're after, head on over to my website, mmabettingtips.com, where I leave breakdowns for every single fight on every single UFC card. Check it out, link in the description below. So if we start off by taking a look at the odds on this one, we can see that Raquel Pennington is the slight underdog at odds of around 2.0, which is going to be plus 100 for an implied probability of 50%. If we take a look at the odds on Ketlin Vieira, she's around an average of 1.80, which is minus 125 for an implied probability of 56%. So this fight's very close to 50-50 in the eyes of the bookies. It's our job now to see if we can lean 60-40 one way or the other to find a good position for us to put our money. So what's very interesting about this matchup is that Ketlin Vieira was one of the first names that jumped out at me as a potential bet on this card. I was really surprised that she wasn't a bigger favourite in this matchup since she's coming into this fight after impressive wins over some big names in the bantamweight division like Holly Holm and Misha Tate. But when I researched this fight, I actually started to lean more towards Raquel Pennington for all the reasons that I'll share with you, you know, as we work our way through this video. But it does seem like a lot of people are perhaps betting on hazy memories or their initial feelings around this matchup. So if we look at the odds movement chart, we can see Vieira's odds have been gradually declining since they were first released uh, when she was around 1.95 minus 105. She's down a bit since then and we can see with red arrows all across the board her odds do continue to decline. Like I say, if you're working from hem hazy memories, if you're wiki cap in this one, I can understand why you'd lean towards Vieira in this matchup. But after researching their recent fights, I do think Pennington's more likely to get it done. So, why do I feel that way? Well, first of all, I want to discuss one huge issue with Pennington that we need to be very aware of whenever we're betting on Raquel Pennington's fights. But I feel it also may be something that has held her back in the past and may no longer be an issue. Because what's interesting about this matchup is that all of my criticisms of Ketlin Vieira were criticisms that I had about Raquel Pennington throughout the vast majority of Pennington's career. You know, if you look at Pennington's record, um, you know, she's been involved in a lot of fights that went to a split decision. We can see one there, we can see one there, we can see one there, and we can see one uh, just the, just the, oh, one there as well, right? Four split decisions in her UFC career. Now, on top of that, you can see that the vast majority of her fights have gone the distance. She is a decisionator. And one of the biggest weaknesses uh, Pennington's had throughout her career is that she's one of these fighters that always seems to fight to the level of her opponent. So if she's fighting, you know, one of the best bantamweights in the world, she's skilled enough and well-rounded enough to hold her own against that fighter. But then if she's fighting against a very low-level bantamweight, someone that she should beat very easily, she would always find a way to make her fights close because she was just very passive very tentative she would hold back a lot and she would never really just go out there put it on her opponents and win rounds decisively and for that reason so many of her fights would end up being razor close which is the reason why she's fought to so many split decisions since she first came into the UFC it's also the reason why she's got this sketchy 14 and 8 record Pennington is far better than her record suggests but there's been some kind of mental block, some performance anxiety with Pennington over the years where she just doesn't let it go. At times, just doesn't feel like she has that fire. She makes bad decisions in fights. She doesn't fight with urgency. You know, she has bad fight IQ and that's really held her back throughout her career. And all those things that I've just said about Pennington certainly apply to Ketlin Vieira. She's another fighter that often struggles to put her stamp on rounds. She has bad fight IQ. She just doesn't go out there 
and put it on her opponents. It always feels like she's holding back. Always feels like she could be doing more and has more to give. If you go and watch her recent fights against Holly Holm and Misha Tate, you'll see long periods of inactivity where she kind of just stands there not doing a lot. You guys know the video game Street Fighter, right? When a match starts in Street Fighter, you know the characters are just stood in their stance, just kind of like doing this. And if you don't move the gamepad, they will just stay there forever doing this. You know, in Vieira's fights, you get long periods where she's kind of just doing this with very little output. And because of that, her, her, her fights tend to be really close because she doesn't put her stamp on rounds. It's the reason why her last fight against Holly Holm went to a split decision. She's got exactly the same problem that Pennington's had throughout the majority of her career. She just doesn't put it on her opponent. She's very, very frustrating to watch. Both Pennington and Vieira throughout their careers have been the kind of fighters where if you bet them, you'll be screaming at your TV for them to actually just do something because so often they, they do a whole lot of nothing. And what you also see with both Pennington and Vieira is that they'll also spend a lot of time in positions kind of stalling. So not only do they at times not do a whole lot on the feet, but they'll also spend a lot of time in the clinch, you know, battling for position up against the cage, where again, they, they really don't do a whole lot. And so for that reason, um, both these fighters are very frustrating and they're capable of so much more. But what's interesting about Raquel Pennington is that I feel it's really, really possible that she could have turned a major corner because after her loss to Amanda Nunes, she was diagnosed with hypothyroidism, which we know is an autoimmune condition, which can affect your mood, your motivation, your energy levels. It wreaks havoc on your body. And it must have been really difficult for Raquel Pennington to try and compete as a professional athlete with this pretty nasty, pre pretty serious health condition. And even though she was only diagnosed with hypothyroidism after losing to Amanda Nunes, I question whether she's had this for much longer because we know with autoimmune diseases, a lot of them are very difficult to diagnose and many people live with them for years without even realizing that they've got them. They just don't know why they feel tired and depressed all the time and then they get diagnosed they go on the medication and they can start to ease some of those symptoms and, and often feel a lot better and i feel this may be what we're seeing with raquel pennington because for much of her career she was kind of passive she was kind of tentative she would hold back a lot she would have bad fight iq she just lacked that fire in the octagon but in her last few fights against macy kiazon pani kianzad Aspen Lad, she seems to have that fire back. She seems to have that aggression back. And that's resulted in her coming into this matchup on a four fight winning streak. Pennington really seems to have turned a corner where now she fights at a very high pace. She fights far smarter than she used to. And she's far more aggressive than she used to be. So I'm wondering whether the hypothyroidism kind of caused all these issues for her over the years. Now that she's been diagnosed, you know, on medication, she feels a lot better and now she's able to fight closer to her full potential. Whereas all the issues we've spoken about in this breakdown with both fighters are still present for Vieira. And that's a big part of the reason why I lean towards Pennington in this fight. I feel like the odds may be set based on Pennington's entire body of work throughout her career without perhaps realizing that subtly, very, very subtly, over Pennington's last three or four fights, she may have started to turn a corner and now looks a lot better than she did for much of her UFC career. Whereas Vieira's performances have still been uh, fraught with passive tentative tendencies, uh, you know, in her last couple of fights against Tate and Home. So that's one of the major reasons why I lean towards Pennington in this fight. On top of that, I think Pennington matches up pretty well with Vieira from a stylistic point of view. We know that Vieira is very, very weak off her back. She's the kind of fighter that if you do take her down, you can hold her down for long periods. She doesn't really know how to work her way back up to her feet. It might not be a huge issue in this fight because Pennington rarely tries to take her opponents down. But we know Pennington's a pretty good offensive wrestler, has a pretty heavy top game. And if she were to try and take Vieira down, it probably wouldn't be that difficult. And if she did get Vieira down, she'd probably be able to hold her down and rack up quite a lot of top control and, and, and score a lot of points in the eyes of the judges. 
So when it comes to grappling, I give Pennington an advantage here. I think a big criticism I have of Pennington is throughout her career, she hasn't used her grappling enough. But where we're starting to see her fight more aggressive and turn a corner now, maybe we'll see more grappling from her this weekend, especially because it's a huge weakness that she could potentially exploit in Vieira. Now, when it comes to striking, I think Vieira is better defensively. I think Vieira also lands the harder, more impactful shots. Pennington's much more of a volume striker that just looks to break you down and chip away at you with volume. She doesn't really have much power in her hands. It's one of the reasons why she's fought to so many decisions throughout her UFC career. She just doesn't really have that pop in her shots, that power in her hands to hurt her opponents on the feet. But she is capable of fighting at a much higher pace than Vieira. Vieira is much more of a single shot power striker whereas Pennington wants to break you down with a more diverse range of attacks, combinations, more volume. So this is power versus volume. And with Pennington being so tough, you know, reasonably good defensively as well, you know, if neither girl is particularly likely to get a finish, the person that's likely to have more success on the feet is the one that's going to be throwing more, landing more, who's going to be busier out of the two. And I think undoubtedly that's more than likely going to be Pennington. So... When we sum up everything that I've just said from a betting point of view, I lean Pennington here because, from my perspective, she may have turned a corner and is performing a lot better now that she's got her hypothyroidism under control. I think she's a better grappler than Vieira, and I also think she can outwork her on the feet. Having said that, Pennington does have bad fight IQ, old habits die hard, and maybe she shows up and puts in a performance, you know, like we saw from her through much of her career, where... She just doesn't really put it on her opponent. This fight ends up being raised or close and someone wins a split decision. I can definitely see that happening. But with both being in the even money odds range, um, I think Pennington for sure gives you the better risk to reward ratio. She's definitely my lean in this one. So let's take a look at the over-unders and the prop bets for this fight. So based on everything that I've said, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out this fight's very likely to go the distance. We know both girls are tough, we know they're both very well-rounded, and we know in the case of Pennington in particular, she's a bit of a decisionator. Her fights usually do go the distance, and that is reflected in the odds. For me, this fight is so likely to go to a decision that I don't have any interest in the under... And because the odds are so steep on the fight to go the distance, obviously I can't bet this either. These odds are completely dead. There are no opportunities here, in my opinion. The odds are pretty much exactly where they should be. Now, in terms of prop bets, the only one that I would really consider on this is Pennington by decision. Now, the odds on Pennington by decision are not that much better on her to win straight up by money line. So if you do want to bet this fight, I think give 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 the props a pass and just bet Pennington straight up. Like I say, I don't feel super confident in Pennington this weekend. It's very difficult to bet on a fighter with any level of confidence that does have a long-term chronic health issue that could rear its ugly head at any time and have a big negative impact on their performance. So while I do think Pennington has the edge over Vieira everywhere, her inconsistency throughout her career, her passiveness... Her bad fight IQ at times, her hypothyroidism makes it really difficult for me to find value in her in this even money odds range. With her implied probability being around 50%, it's difficult to trust her in this odds range. If she were like a 2.30, you know, plus 130, plus 140 underdog in that odds range, I'd probably take a little shot on Pennington. But in this even money odds range, I think these odds are pretty much exactly where they should be. So I'm going to be passing on this one. But it's a complex fight and I'm sure you've got lots of opinions on how you think it's going to play out. So please let me know what you think in the comments below. Help me make my mind up. Who do you lean towards here? If you like this breakdown video, hit the like button. And also don't forget to check out all my other breakdown videos for this card on YouTube. And also on my website mmabettingtips.com where I break down every single fight on every single UFC card. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget I'll be back on YouTube tomorrow with another breakdown video for another fight. Take care guys. See you all soon.